there is that generation of beauty in our blood. So he said, I will accept what you guys have given me, but I will work for what flows in our blood. Somebody said men marry their mothers and girls marry their fathers. You have to be careful if you come from an abusive family because you may end up being attracted to abusive men. Sarah was so beautiful that when they were about to enter Egypt, Abraham said, ah! <laughs> It was Sarah, my sister, <laughs> for today only. And of course, of course, Sarah was his sister, in case you don't know. They were relatives. But Abraham told Abimelech, you know, this is my sister. And you know, those days, kings would not just pounce on a woman and take her. So Sarah was put again on a beautification process before the king would touch her. And Abraham was being treated as a son-in-law. So Abraham was being given privileges. You know, some of these Old Testament men, if I look at the men God used, I always say I'm better off. If Solomon made it to heaven, I don't know what I'll be going to look for from hell. Solomon is in heaven, by the way. David is in heaven. So is it me that I should go to hell? I told somebody one day, if I get to the gate of heaven, of course this is a joke. Na kwe na tashwishwi kidogo hapo. Hati ulo toa identification. Ni huku ama ni huku. I will tell them, my brother, don't even ask that. Open, look at the men that are in there. Solomon is in there. Abraham is in there. Why should you lock me out? I have not done some of the things that David did and Solomon did. Why should I stay out? So Abraham was being treated as a great in-law, a brother to Sarah. And the king was preparing to marry Sarah. Then when the day drew close and Sarah was now more beautiful, and the king was about to lay his hand on the woman, God came and God told him, Sir, you are not planning to die. You are a dead man. He said, God, <laughs> God how can you say I'm a dead man? God said, because this woman you are with here is a prophet's wife. Is a lying prophet's wife. The prophet was afraid and lied. And God has come to defend a lying prophet. And God has said, even though he lied, I will kill for him. If you don't return this woman, you are a dead man. So he called the lying prophet. He said, my brother, why, why do something like this? Said I was afraid. Because my wife is beautiful. And then the king said, what if I took her? Then God also gave the king instructions. Return the woman and let the man pray for you. Sometimes I don't understand God. The question I'm asking is this. <coughs> the reason I respect people that carry the anointing. When I read some stories, I just respect people that carry grace. He lied. That is, that is problem number one. He lied. Number two, he was afraid. And he lied. Then God is now telling somebody he's already dead. And then God is telling the man, return the woman and let Abraham pray for you. My question is, Abraham is going to pray to him. To who? Is it not God that answers prayer? Why should God send me to another man to pray to him for me? Then after that, on top of the prayer, the man took gifts and blessed Abraham for lying and creating a problem between him and God. And then the man told Abraham, take your wife and be gone. i give you another example. Miriam and, Mo Miriam and Aaron, they insulted Moses. They talked against Moses. And then Moses was not aware. And then God came. When God told them, come out, go to the tabernacle, Moses didn't know why God was telling them to go to the tabernacle. When God showed up, Moses didn't know why. And then God said, this side, this side. If there is a prophet among you, 
I speak to him in visions and dreams. But not so. Moses was not some great man with what we call big titles. This is the title that God gave Moses. Not so with Moses, with my servant Moses. The servant came before his name. The others are prophets, but Moses was a servant. There are things servants touch that prophets cannot touch. He said, not so with my servant Moses. Then why were you not afraid to talk against him? And then the Bible says, when the cloud lifted, Miriam was as leprous as snow. And Moses began to cry to God, please Lord, please Lord, heal my sister. Please Lord, don't let her flesh be like one that has been consumed. God came and told Moses, son, you are the one she insulted. And according to you, you are forgiven her. But do you know you are not even aware when she insulted you? She didn't insult you. She insulted me. So forgive her, but allow me to finish with her. That's what I fear. There's a place God is bringing the church in our generation where we will not speak like men that are not wise. Some things happen even if they are wrong. Don't make them your subject of debate. There are posts don't comment on on Facebook. Leave them. There are things you hear people saying, don't join them. Behave like you didn't hear them. There are, there, 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 there are assemblies, don't sit there. Because you are wise. You know the truth. You understand? Did you know that when Ham saw the nakedness of his father, and he went to tell it to his brothers, he was not speaking a lie. He was speaking the truth. The old man was naked. He didn't lie. And he didn't do anything wrong according to me. Because if he didn't tell his brothers, his brothers could have not covered his father. And it is true, the old man was a drunkard. And the Bible calls him a preacher of righteousness. Noah was a preacher of righteousness. But he had this anointing to drink. That one day he drank. You know, drunkards celebrate drunkardness in different ways. They are drunkards after they drink, they become holy. They sing songs of heaven. They, 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 they are in the spirit. They'll be saved in every crusade. After he drinks, the, the alcohol takes him to the crusade. Any altar call, he's there. That, he's giving his life to Jesus Christ. He's gone. He's gone. They are drunkards that manifest their drinking by asking questions. Ninini. Who are you? Who do you think you are? Their own manifest in asking questions. <laughs> and they are drunkards that are celebrated by removing clothes. The clothes become heavy. So Noah was in that category. He drank that when he was done drinking, he said, these clothes are doing, the, they are doing me disservice. He removed them. He said, God created man without clothes. Allow me to rest. And he rested. So the boy came and found his father naked. And the Bible says he saw his father's nakedness. And he told his brothers. One thing that I've never understood about drunkards is that the moment you think he's too drunk, there is something he's noticing that you're not noticing. So even though Noah was drunk, the Bible says when he woke up from his wine, he knew what his younger son had done to him. And the drunkard opened his mouth. And that is the problem we are having until today. The kind of wealth that is in Congo, underground, cannot be found in any nation around the world, any, any of the nations of the earth. The kind of wealth that is in Congo, underground. But while they are fighting, the descendants of Japheth and Shem carry the wealth away. Theologically, Ham became the father of all that don't do well. When you talk about Turkey, you're talking about the territory of Shem. When you talk about certain parts of America, 
certain parts of Europe. A drunkard gave to a son who covered him. He said, Cast the ham, a servant of servants. The descendants of Ham were bought and sold like animals, like goods. Read about the slave trade. What a father said is an issue until today. I close. God is a generation of God. Lift up your hands and say in the name of Jesus, I serve a big God. I refuse to behave like he's unable. Shout in the name of Jesus. Tonight the Lord is dropping something in my life that will go to the generation of my children. Tonight the Lord is dropping something in my life that will go to the generation of my children. Lift up your hands and begin to call out the name of your children. Stand up on your feet. Lift up your hands in the presence of God. Tonight we are not going to believe for ourselves. Tonight we are going to pray some generational prayers. Open your mouth, my brother on the keyboard, get on it. Open your mouth. And tonight what we are praying for is that there is a provision that is coming. There is an idea that God is going to give a man here. There is an opening, there is an opportunity that God is opening for a man here. It will be a generational opportunity. It will be a generational opening. It will be a generational blessing. Open your mouth, lift up your hands and begin to speak into your generation. I don't know how many children you have. I don't know how many children God gave you. But tonight I hear God saying, let us go to him on behalf of our children. Let us go to him on behalf of the coming generation. Let us go to him on behalf of the children he gave us. If there is anything the enemy has come up with to destroy your children, to destroy their generation, to, 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 to provoke anger over them, to destroy their place, you have a son. You have a daughter that doesn't have a job. You have a son. You have a daughter that has never been married. She has three children. She has not found a place to get married. I hear God saying, I am bigger than you. I go to the generation. I look for children. I look for grandchildren. I look for great grandchildren. Lift up your hands and begin to pray in other tongues. Begin to trace your children. Begin to trust them wherever they are. Kalalabos. Liberebos. Shadadadadabos. You are a big God. You will not just bless us and fail to bless our children. You will not just bless us and fail to touch our children. Kadadadadabos. Sedadadadabos. Sedadadadabos. Lembros peralabo zeketeba shadada na bororo. You are not married. Lay your hands on your loins. Your children are on your loins. They are in your sea. God has a plan for your marriage. God has a plan. You'll have a family. God has a plan for your children. Open your mouth. What God has for you is going all the way to the generation of your children. Speak in other tongues. Battle for your children. Tell Satan, you can't do this to my son. You can't do this to my daughter. You can't do this. Whatever you did in my life, you cannot do it in the life of my children. Whatever my father struggled with, my children will not struggle with it. Is a night of war for generations. Is a night of war for generations. None of your children will be a drunkard. None will be a smoker. None will embarrass the gospel. Something is happening in this congregation. A generation of blessing. Shadadadadabarabos. <laughs> 
call out your names. I pray for Natasha. I pray for Joshua. I pray for Hadassah. I pray for Hidahosa. Their generation is blessed. Wealth and riches will be found in their houses. Our brightness is their portion. I have put the seeds of unrighteousness. I have put the seeds of attack. I have put foundational attack in their lives. You are a great God. You are a generation of God. You are a God that sees into the future. You are a God that sees into the generation of our children. They are the leaders of tomorrow. The prophets of tomorrow. I see household salvation. I see sons getting saved. Daughters getting saved. Grandchildren serving God. He's a generation of God. Shadadada Koboros Lembros Paralambosa Leboros Sebadada Kebelebo Shadadaba. In the name of Jesus. Open your hands wherever you are. Close your eyes. Close your eyes wherever you are. Open your hands. Open your hands in the presence of God. Father, in the name of Jesus, we decree and we declare that the battles that fought our parents, fought our brothers, fought generations that are gone, that the enemy is getting ready to use against our children, we nullify on this altar today. We nullify upon this altar today. Any spirit of poverty that the enemy is waiting to use in the generation of our children, whatever we have escaped, that Satan wants to bring back in the generation of our children, but the power of the blood of Jesus, we nullify tonight. Clap your hands and begin to pray. Clap your hands and begin to pray. Kabara Rabasa. Lopororo Sebedeva. Loro Sebede Dabarasa. Keboroso. Sedeborosa. Lebebosa Dadabos. Sedebebosa. Pararabasa Daraba. Loparata. Kebarato. Sedebeka. Lombra Sebede. Sedebarata. Loparatoka. Sedebora. Nekeba. Leporo. Call out their names. Clap your hands and call out their names. Sadadaborosa. Kararo Sabade. Any weapon of attack against my children that the enemy wants to use against my children upon this altar. I nullify. I nullify. I nullify. By the blood of Jesus, I nullify. I loosen their future. I release their destinies. In the name of Jesus. 